Hi, I'm Dan Jones. I'm editor at Light Reading. We're here at Mobile World Congress for Orb TV. We're here with John Saw, who is the CTO of Sprint, and we're mostly talking 5G. Hi, John. How you doing? Good to see you again, Dan. Yeah. So, uh, first off, the obvious question: uh, What's the latest on Sprint's plan for delivering mobile 5G? Well, I think uh, we we just announced at uh, the Mobile World Congress that we're going to be rolling out um, the a mobile 5G network. Mm -hmm. uh, we named the first six cities. Yeah. Um, Atlanta, Houston, Dallas, Los Angeles, uh, Washington, D.C., um, and one other market, Chicago. <laughs> right. So, so those are big, big cities. Yep. And yep. Um, the technology we're going to leverage for this is Massive MIMO. Right. Um, as you know, Massive MIMO is a 5G technology. Mm -hmm. It works really well on TDD, especially for um, 2.5 gigahertz band, that's the mm -hmm. spectrum we're using. And, and with Massive MIMO, it, it has 128 antenna elements. Right. Um, as you know, most cellular systems today have four antennas. Right. So we have 128 antenna elements. Uh, so we can do like multi-dimensional beam forming. But just as important, we can actually split the massive MIMO antennas into two physically and logically. So half the antennas we can use it for LTE, mm -hmm. and the other half we are going to use it for 5G, uh, non uh, for non standalone. And and the trick that to do to do this is that you know you have enough you have to have enough spectrum, and for Sprint we have 160 megahertz of 2.5 gigahertz spectrum in every market in the top 100 markets. So as an average. So we have ample spectrum to actually on the same massive MIMO site mm -hmm. to light up both LTE and 5G at the same time. Right. right. So I call it killing two birds with one stone. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, do you think that's kind of one of the major ways that your strategy differs from other US carriers as regards 5G? Yeah, so you know everybody's trying to, to make uh, you know, laminate from the lemons that they have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the the big the big two uh, operators are obviously focused on millimeter waves. Mm -hmm. um, that's the spectrum that they have for 5G. Um, you know, they don't have enough sub six gigahertz spectrum to do anything on mobile 5G because they're all you know right. used for LTE. Uh, millimeter waves have have its advantages and some major disadvantages. Like its propagation is fairly limited, so you, you do need to expand a lot of resources to solve for that. Um, for Sprint, you know, 2.5 gigahertz is, is, you know, we have unused spectrum that's fresh that we can use for 5G and certainly that's what we're going to, to leverage. And, and so that's how we're going to be different from them. I think our footprint is also going to be probably bigger. Right. Because, you know, we have 2.5 spectrum today covering more than 200 million pops. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be a substantial footprint. It's not going to be just a hot zone, you know, a millimetric hot zone. Um, it's going to be fairly big in metro areas where we put massive MIMO and you're going to have both LTE and, and 5G. So you know, that's how we're going to be different. Sure. Yeah. And a, a partnership is going to play a role in, in this kind of 5G rollout? Clearly. Um, you know, in order for us to, to roll out a, a mobile 5G network, you need to have an ecosystem to support it. Um, first and foremost, we, we have three uh, of our o OEM, the RAN, the RAN vendors uh, on the base stations on the infrastructure side. Um, they're fully behind this. Um, th that's where we're getting a massive MIMO technology from. Mm -hmm. So you have Ericsson, Samsung, and, and, and Nokia, mm -hmm. right? Um, on the chipset level, uh, you obviously need devices mm -hmm. and, and for phones. And, and the other thing that's different for us is from, from um, the other operators uh, is that we intend to launch a 5G phone, the first 5G uh, right. smartphone. So you obviously need an ecosystem for that. Right. So on Qual in Qualcomm's uh, the X50 uh, 5G modem chipset, for mm -hmm. example, uh, it supports the 2.5 gigahertz band. Right. Right. So so that's going to be a key engine that's going to drive handset manufacturers, and we have been working with. Um, uh, some handset manufacturers to develop the first uh, 5G phones. Sure. Right. And uh, you mentioned the cities already. Is there going to be a specific city that's going to be the first kind of Sprint 5G launch area? 
I, I think that the six that we mentioned, uh, I think we mentioned the first three. I think it's uh, mm -hmm. Chicago, um, Atlanta, and LA. Those are going to be the first three that we're going to be starting to build uh, right. massive MIMO in, in the next few weeks. So uh, you're going for big cities. Okay. Yeah, we're going to start yeah. from there and then grow massive MIMO in more, in more markets. Mm -hmm. and a massive MIMO is a capacity tool. Right. right, and in a lot of those cities, you, you, as we add capacity, it makes sense for us to add massive MIMO antennas. And while we're doing it, it's going to be 5G ready in mm -hmm. a couple of months down the road. Uh, we're going to add 5G uh, and our software. Right. right. The devices will be available in 19, as I understand it, right? We, the, the target for us is to, is to have uh, the phones and devices supporting um, 5G uh, and our first half by the first half of uh, 2019. Right, yes. right, right. Yep. Okay. And you've mentioned your spectrum position to a certain extent. Do you feel that it gives you a, a kind of distinct advantage in the 5G era? Certainly it does. I, I think, you know, we are the only ones that probably has enough spectrum with wide bandwidths uh, in a sub 6 gigahertz range that is in release 15 mm -hmm. that we can actually differentiate ourselves and being first with a a substantial footprint for, for massive MIMO. So it's going to give us a head start. Right. And, and over time, as you know, we migrate more and more LTE traffic over to, to 5G, our 5G spectrum available for 5G is going to grow. Right. right. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Dan. Thanks. It's a pleasure to Thanks talk to you. Thanks very much. Right. Okay. Uh, I've been Dan Jones from Light Reading for Orb TV.